Hey, we're live. The intro video didn't play. We'll fix that for next time. Um, let's get right into it, I guess. Four dragons preside over the four seasons. Spring, summer, fall, winter. This we know is true. The four created 20 dragons of earth and sky, and each of the four became part of the world. This we know is true. The dragon of spring became the wind of magic. The dragon of summer became the sun called yore. The dragon of fall became the colors of emotion. And the dragon of winter became the moon called Badra. This we know is true. The 20 dragons were gifted with dominion over land and sky. This we know is true. And in turn shaped land, water, sky, and weather. This we know is true. Even now the world is protected by the four and the 20. This we know is true. And now we'll pass it over to the very lovely Alice. Oh, hi. Um, just a few things before um, I hand back over to Mal. Please check out the links coming up in chat now. That includes uh, Discord. We have a channel just for this wonderful story here. If you want to go and uh, have a um, good chat about it. Also, if you've missed anything, we do have a playlist on YouTube for you to catch up. Um, a huge, huge thank you to our wonderful sponsors who we couldn't do this without in the form of Hero Forge. Um, you can go and get all your wonderful minis there. You'll probably see them in the break as you would have seen them in the load up screen as well of all our characters from this game. Also, Mage Empress, Dark Matter is officially out. It is gorgeous. This book has been two years of work and I've seen every single edition as it goes. I love it. Definitely go check this out. Um, and also last but certainly not least, The Deck of Many, uh, which created Humblewood. And I actually have them today because I went and pinched them off the strap. Um, the Moving Magic cards, I don't know if you can actually I don't know if it's picking up very well on there, but they're really, really cool. So I'll hand back over to Mel. Bye. Right. You're muted, Mel. Also follow Alice on uh, Patreon. <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna do that when she actually talks about herself, but yeah, follow <laughs> Alice on Patreon. We'll do it again. <laughs> um yeah, we're back for episode three of our amazing show. Uh, I hope everyone's having a great time. Uh, we're going to move right into our character and player introductions, starting with the always lovely Brie. Always. Did you hear that chat? Always. It's me, NPC Brie, um, Witch Queen of Greyhawk Channel. I am playing Scout today, everyone's favorite young teen who is adventuring with all these grown-ups, learning about the world. Um, don't worry, she's brought her own knives, so the DM doesn't have to worry about any of that. She's out here to make everyone cry, but also laugh with her big steak. I You're love it so much. Yep, <laughs> I'm muted. It's going to be that. That's today. I'm muted. That's today. Yep. Uh, and then, of course, we'll go to the very lovely Todd. That's me. Hi, everybody. How are you? I am playing Galaron, <clears throat> a uh, noble slash mercenary slash big brother, efficient attitude type person. Uh, I am Crusade Warlords on Twitter, warlordscrusade.com on the internet for my leather work. However, I am completely dark with all that until the new year. So do not message me for an armor because I'm probably not going to respond. And then of course we go to the very lovely Anik. Hello, uh, my name is Anik. You can find me on Twitter at Anikster. Uh, nothing to plug right now. Uh, I play Juniper, the farmer slash summer magic user who's still not quite sure why they're going, where they're going, but something's wrong and she's hoping she can help fix things and in the meantime, mother over everyone in the group, whether they like it or not. Her and all her animals, they're always there. And then, of course, the very lovely Alice. Oh, hi. I'm Alice. I'm also White Rabbit Pig on Twitter, as everyone apparently yells you here. I do have a Patreon. There's stuff came out today, and there is more stuff on the way in the next few weeks. Um, I am a DM for this channel, as well as a player, as you can see here. And I am playing a Harper, the incredibly socially <laughs> awkward um, individual, 28-year-old uh, merchant, who at the moment is freaking out a little bit, but... I'm sure she's fine. 
Uh, I guess that leaves me, and I never know what to say. Um, I'm Mal. You can find me on Twitter at Malhadale. I play in Alice's Amazing Doors of Genera game on Monday nights here on the Academy. I run Breath of Magic here right now. And uh, this Friday, I have my Dark Side of the Blue Pirates in the Blue uh, prequel setting to uh, the wonderful Kiana's uh, Adventures in the Wild Blue over on Off the Table. That's words. Words happen. Um, and uh, we've already got 10 retweets, so if I seem a little distracted, it's because I'm trying to do four things. Um, we'll do the recap, and then I'll worry about that, I guess. Um, okay. I'm going to say I'm a lot and mute myself a lot, I guess, today. The group headed into the forest after dark to look for more information on the blight. There was no sign of humans or animals. The plant life was showing the signs of the corruption. To help deal with the growing rain, Juniper conjured giant leaves to use as umbrellas, but in casting the spell, it made her unusually hungry. After some short investigation, Galeron attempted to ask a question and was suddenly speaking backwards. The party wonders if it's the Blight's influence. Finding no further clue to what might be going on, they decide to leave the forest. As they're crossing the bridge back to town, Harper has a vision of a bright sunny day and a city of bronze buildings and rail tracks on a bridge. This is the city of Bronze Crossing, which is built on a bridge and is located northwest of Bluefield. In her vision, Harper also sees a winged shape in the sky. As they cross into town, Galeron can speak normally again. They bed down in various locations, Harper and Galeron sleeping next to the fountain in the center of town, and Scout and Juniper sharing Juniper's room at the inn. Everyone reflects on the events of the past day before they go to sleep. In the morning, after a breakfast arranged by Galeron, they go to Mima to ask permission to take Scout with them to Bronze Crossing. Galeron also sets out about buying provisions and other supplies for the journey. Scout receives her grandmother's blessing to go on the journey after Harper and Grandma Heather have a long talk. Scout also gets access to her parents' adventuring chest, while Galeron commissions, in his own intimidating way, a sword at the local smith. Juniper prepares her packs and animals and writes home. They all meet up at Mima's farm again before heading out. Scout gets a locket as a memento from a parting gift from her grandmother. On their way out of Bluefield, they stop by the inn so Juniper can send her letters. And while she does this, she's given a letter to pass on to Harper. Harper hasn't told anyone, but the letter simply says, Come find me, Harps. No signature. After reading the letter, Harper is visibly upset and insists on rushing out of town. Her mood upsets Scout and Harper sends her on ahead. Juniper offers to help Harper with whatever is going on, but also gently reprimands her for upsetting Scout. They decide to travel through the woods as a shortcut. Before they head off the road, Juniper takes a moment to switch her walking stick out at a local shrine. They move away from Bluefield and see fewer signs of the blight. While traveling in the dense forest, they notice they're being trailed by what appear to be animals. Galeron wants to fight them, but Juniper convinces him to let her speak with them and gets them to leave the group alone. As the forest thins, they start looking for a place to camp for the night. And as they reach the tree line, they emerge into a large open plain of, of tall grass. And they make camp near a ridge. Scout had mentioned that Harper was upset to Galeron earlier, but blames Rebecca for telling him. And Galeron asks Scout and Juniper to go gather firewood and herbs while he talks to Harper. As Juniper and Scout are out in the fields, they gather healing herbs and Scout wistfully states she'd like to have met more witches. As she says that, magical leaves appear in the air around her and float to the ground. Uh, and the two of you, I believe, found a sunset hime apple in the grassland. It functions essentially like a healing potion to recover two HP when eaten. Uh, it resembles an apple and is rich and nourishing. And I suppose we'll move right from there into Galeron and Harper as they wanted to have a conversation. Papa, 
you have a yes. moment? You have a moment. She sort of cringes a little bit. She's like, I guess. You would say it's been a long time since we first met, would you? A very long time. You've come so far, Harper. You've grown to this strong person. However, there is something clearly bothering you now. Would you like to talk about it? She sort of pauses for a moment, almost not rolling her eyes, more at herself than anything, and she sort of reaches into her coat and pulls out this very much crushed letter and just hands it to him. It's like... <laughs> just, <laughs> it's like... Uh, I never get letters. And today, I received one from a dead man. Pops is a significant shortage of your name that you are familiar with hearing? Only my father called me that. And... Your father is dead, if I recall. Very, very dead. At least that's what I thought. It's just some kind of sick joke. It's not anything to worry about. I... Call, her on, call her on crumples it back up and throws it back to you. <laughs> yeah, she sort of just catches it, even though it's scrumpled up and puts it in one of her oversized pockets. It's just a joke. It's not. Be practical for a moment. You had a vision in the woods. The blight played some magical effects on us. And now you get a letter from a dead man. Who else would know you as Harps? I've known you for some time. I've Never known that to be an accurate shortage of your name or nickname for you. No, I, I, I hate it. Then who could be playing the joke? She sort of sits down on like a log or something, if there is one. No one else knows that. No one uses the name that I both hate and love, mainly hate. She sort of nods to herself a little bit. But he's dead. And I'm no dead. one, he wouldn't even use my name when we were traveling in front of people. It doesn't make sense. What makes sense is that whoever sent this clearly wants your attention. And they used the phrase or nickname or word to get you agitated enough. All I'm saying is don't dismiss this out of hand. Be practical. And what were some of the hobbies or some of the places your father would spend or do when he was in towns? He, he was a merchant like me. He spoke to loads of people. Didn't he was so well-loved. <clears throat> it was cringingly so. He was so good with people. Then when we get to the Bronze Bridge... Let us just simply explore the possibility of a well-loved merchant traveling or been through the area. Would you not like to see your father again if he was still alive? But he's not. He, he, he's not. He's not. I have been on my own since I was 10. It's like 18 years. He would have found me by now. Well... All I can say is do not pass the opportunity for a second chance with a loved one you think is gone. I'm here if you need anything. And if anyone's playing a sick joke on you, Hoppa, we'll take care of that the same way. She sort of slowly nods. She tucks her hand into her pocket and holds onto it, but not necessarily visible. If the opportunity arises for people coming back from the dead, then I will take the opportunity. Who told I'm you just that? saying it's probably not real. Now, I don't mean to bring up bad memories, but did you watch your father pass? Did you see his body? Scout never saw her parents. Just the belongings were brought back. And yet she thinks and she knows her parents are dead, but the possibility of them being alive, no matter how improbable it may be, if you never saw the body itself, 
and a stranger gave you the message and they had the belongings, there could be a thousand other probable outcomes. No, no stranger gave me a message. I, and she sort of pulls the coat a little bit tighter around her. She's like, this is his coat. I found his coat. I found his, my, his bag. She sort of like pats the bag at her side. And I heard him scream as he told me to run away. And when I came back, there was nothing left because I got lost and I couldn't find him quick enough. I couldn't get back. I couldn't, I, I, I ran away. I did as I was told because that was his one rule. Always follow what he says. If he says, run, then I run. Always follow, always follow what he says are the words you just spoke. Is that correct? Yes. Well then, let us keep one ear open to come and find me, as the letter says. And hopefully, it'll make sense and it's not just a cruel joke. She nods slowly. This is someone playing a trick, though. If it is, then we will deal with them all because nobody hurts my heartless feelings. He kind of taps her on the shoulder. Mm. She sort of like pats his hand back. She's like, I'm going to be so mad if this is a joke. She sort of stands up and closes uh, her coat a bit warmer around her. I mean, I don't even know what he'd look like after 18 years. No pun intended, but let's cross that bronze bridge when we get to it. Ha! I made a joke. Yeah. <laughs> she sort of just smiles at that. Yeah. Whatever you need, Hoppa, you know, you let me know. I know. And same as always. She smiles. And she's going to do a gala and a turn and walk away and <laughs> go and probably just sit down on her own, open up the letter and just look at it over and over again. It's probably more of a matter of, she's trying to remember his handwriting because she saw him write so many times, but she has nothing of his writings left. So it's more that she's just squinting at these few words. Yeah, it's probably, since it's been so long since you've seen the writing, you feel like it's correct, but if you have nothing to compare it to, it's probably hard to really decide, like, 100% if it's correct. But something inside you seems to feel like it is the correct handwriting. I think she just sort of sits down for a bit. She lets Kit sort of climb into the coat, and she opens the... Um, basically the fairy tale book that Galaran gave her and just starts to sit and read it, turning each page very delicately and looking at the the artwork. And I think we'll pan over back to Juniper and Scout who have been gathering herbs and Juniper, did you notice these leaves appear? Uh, yeah, actually, I, I said to her last time that I, I think she might have met a witch a lot sooner than, than she knows herself. And and Scout's just kind of like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, but that's cool. <laughs> and she's like, and she's just like excitedly stuffing dead leaves in her pocket. Yeah, exactly. Um, Scout, yeah. those leaves you're stuffing in your pocket are great for fires. I know this. Yes. Where did you get those? The, do you the see any tree, do you see any trees with fall leaves currently around us i mean it is autumn we're in a grassy plain these aren't poisonous are they did i make a mistake she pulls one out and like licks it okay Ye remember how we're not supposed to check for poison with our mouth <laughs> You pull this out of your pocket and 
everything else that you gathered up is definitely a leaf, but this one feels different in your hand. And when you lick it, it tastes like soap. What? What? Okay. Remove it. <laughs> if you're quite. I don't like this one. I don't like that one at all. It tastes so like. What if you learn about putting things in our mouth? Uh, don't lick everything until you're sure. That is that is a good le- first lesson. Uh, but I was trying to walk you towards a different conclusion. <coughs> Namely, there's no trees, and yet there was leaves falling around you. As soon as you started waving your stick around and thinking about leaves. I have a magical walking stick. Yes. And she like holds the stick into the air like. <laughs> what other Jennifer's tricks? like, yeah, this is for now. We'll go with that. I can't wait to tell everyone. That's great. Um, sure. Uh, I mean, I have, we found some stuff. The leaves are good for the fire. The apples are good for eating. Guess we can return. Magic since this, stick. Since this one might be a little less obvious, that weird leaf is the item we got today so far. Yeah. And so you might want to keep it. There's special things that you don't know yet. All right, I'll keep my I'll keep my soapy leaf, and now I'll just kind of like <laughs> stuff it in. A, I'll stuff it in the pocket with the mushroom in it. My weird Come things on. to lick later. That's uh, at some point, Scout's going to be the one making the stew for the evening, and the uh. whole party's going to sit there and trip. We'll uh, we'll head back to the to the campsite and just sort of rain scout in a little, see if they're done talking, if we can come back yet. Yeah, I think they're yeah, no, I don't see any I don't see any crying or hugging. Yeah, go. She goes like running up with the stick, trying to like smack herself in the head with it. Harper! Harper! Do I I hear this? (laughs) Or is this like, yeah, she's sort of not two phases. She's sort of got her head in a book and looks up and is like, yes? I have a magic stick. Uh, Harper sort of puts her book down and stands up. You see behind behind Scout, yeah, Yeah. behind Scout, you see Junior going, got a magical stick and she's got both hands and she's kind of just shaking it to see what and hop looks a little bit calmer but she's like, how is how is it a magic stick what does it do look 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 and she starts pulling out like piles of dead leaves from her like little pockets she's like look look at these leaves juniper's just behind her sort of laughing to herself going where did the leaves come from the stick they came from the stick That's what Juniper said. Not entirely true. She said there's no trees around. And it happened when I waved my stick around. One plus one equals magic stick. And Harper half smiles a little bit. It's like, okay, okay, hang on, hang on. I come over here and sort of drags her off to the side a little bit. Has the stick done this before? Mm, no. No. Have... Has anything else weird and wonderful, maybe not leaves, no. appeared before without the stick? Mm, no. And Harper smiles. Will you let me know if it does it again? I will. And I'll show you the magic stick. And as she says that, she takes the like leaves and she kind of like overhand tosses them and drops them over the fire. Like real much, just like, cool. Magic leaves. Yeah, also one of them tastes like- The fire so starts to smoke <laughs> because while dead leaves are helpful, they make a lot of smoke. <coughs> yeah, she, uh, uh, Harper's me not. Like, <laughs> and is, is trying to immediately just not douse the fire, but she's getting rid of some of the leaves on it and putting another log, like another few sticks and twigs on there to make it catch that again. It's like, okay, new rule. No throwing leaves on the fire. <laughs> I 
But leaves make the fire <laughs> bigger. Make it smoky. Make it big and smoky. <laughs> uh, I'm write that one down. Yeah. Write it down. <clears throat> and Kit has sort of retreated into half his coat. Um, so. Okay. So other than magic leaves and magic stick, did we find anything else? Uh, we found some really great apples that we should save for when someone's not feeling so good. Healing herbs. Yeah. Well, that sounds good. She's got a softer sort of smile. But like, well, I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. Mm. She sort of digs into her satchel and pulls out like this bread and stuff that she had. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. I mean, there. Uh, Can we still have like leftovers to warm up, or is it? We have leftovers. Scout also is taffy. She's deciding what's a meal as an as an adventure in her head. She's just like. Anything could be a meal when you're an adventurer <laughs> scout. Right, exactly. Like, I'm, reaches into her pocket and I'm pulls out a I'm going to go with and you keep that, lo that leaf to yourself. Oh! <gasps> Harper, lick this leaf! Okay, I'm... Uh, did you lick the leaf? I licked this side. Okay, um... She we can't, we can't just if, go around. She wanted to check if it was poison. I already told her it's a terrible idea. If, maybe if you reiterate. We, we, we can't just lick and eat everything we find in the forest. Well, no, nuts are dangerous. And possibly leaves. Um, poison ivy, you must have heard of poison ivy, right? Yes, I used to bring it home. I didn't, I didn't know it was bad for people because it didn't make my skin blister, but then I gave it to someone and made them sick. I learned. Okay, well, what if other leaves are like poison ivy? We just don't quite know what they are yet. Well, then how are we going to know until we see the reaction and take notes? Medical maybe, science. Well, okay, but no, maybe don't lick it in the middle of nowhere. Lick it when we're, no, don't lick it. Just don't lick the leaves. <laughs> She's sort of like, you can hear the anxiousness coming back again. As she too starts taking out some leftovers and using the bread to like scoop some of it up, sort of pushing it into Scout's hand, like takes the taffy out of her hand very slowly, puts <laughs> it in, puts the taffy back on top. Oh, even as an adventurer, I have to eat real food first. Energy and not leaves. It tastes like soap as she like takes a huge bite. Then why do you want to? Okay. And. A harper sort of moves over to um, Goleran and hands out some leftovers, breaks off some bread. There's a similar thing just for like Kit, but not the bread or anything. When you go to uh, give Kit something to eat, you notice that they are playing with a small blood orange. And she sort of leans down and like, takes it, not off him, if he's like got it in his mouth, he won't chew into it, but she's holds her hand out. He'll probably plop it in her palm and she's like, where did you get this? These aren't... Did you steal? We stopped that. Like, stop. And it's like, we don't steal anymore. So, because I know some things, does, does Kit talk to you? Maybe it's more... It's not, f like, full-on sentences but it's more a connection rather than actual. He doesn't, you know, then rock back, sit his hand up and go, well, let me tell you a right. tale. <laughs> like, that's, that's, I was, I was like, does, are there words that only you hear? Is it images and motions? It's like, more images and motions. There's no real talking. They can't have a conversation. Well, you get from Kit then the feeling that it's not only so they kit didn't steal it it's magic and it's safe she's she's taking it looking at him and just like sniffing it and trying to like work out what it is that makes it magic because i'm guessing she can sense it as well 
Yeah, if you want to roll a job knowledge check for me. Yep, it's bad. <laughs> this is a fruit, all right. <laughs> this is definitely an orange. <laughs> Maybe an apple. <laughs> I don't know. Well, get you, you get a fumble point and the group has you get the a fumble, fumble point. point. You get a fumble what point. What is this strange fruit from a far off land? <laughs> is how I look at this. Gotta orange. be a lychee. <laughs> Um, mm, how do I wanna? Can I can I taste it? I know I've just told like um, Scout not to lick it, but I know this is safe. <laughs> um, I try mm. to do it discreetly as well. I'm like, <laughs> I would like to discreetly eat a segment of orange, please. Ooh, can I see if she's gonna eat a strange fruit? <laughs> That's I know the right what the thing. fruit is. I know what the fruit is. I just don't know exactly its magical properties. Scout's just watching her eat a weird fruit while she's eating bread. <laughs> um, sure. If you want to take a bite out of it, I will let you uh, roll again to see if you can figure out what it is. Okay. Job knowledge or like um, how? Or uh, sense. Sense if you yeah, sense this time if you want. I'm just so glad it's not Rebecca for once. There we go. Awesome. Uh that's a crit, I think, because the eight's in green. Mm -hmm. let me, yes. Let me pull up the PDF of the book real quick. Uh, come on, PDF. There we go. Everyone just enjoy the nice, chill evening music while I look stuff up. Uh, yeah, I know do it, getting a crit does something. I just got to find it again. I love the look of the uh, Ryutama book, but it's not the easiest to search through. <laughs> well, I know Harper's trying to like- I think it's on page 92. I know Harper's like trying to eat this orange, not super discreetly, but not making it too obvious. Like she's tasting it, not eating it, but she does spot Scout <laughs> looking and just makes eye contact as she slowly takes a bite out of it. Because you slide the like, yeah, just... peel off a piece and you're like, <laughs> I'm an adult. I can lick whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> I know it, what fruit it is. <laughs> I've paid my dues. I can it's lick whatever those, I want. Don't do as I do. Do as I say. Yes. Okay. So you definitely figure out that uh, it has, not counting the one you ate to figure it out, we'll say it has two uses and it cures disease. I just go like rub it on a tree somewhere that looks infected. <laughs> See if it... No, I don't want to do that. Um, sort of looks at it. She sort of can tell she's really taking it in as she's tasting it, and sort of huh, opens up some brown paper, wraps it up, and puts it in her pocket. And continues to eat her leftovers. <laughs> Excuse me while I get all tangled in my like various cords and try and figure out where I'm stuck. I think um, Harper definitely looks at Scout whilst she's doing this, but does continue to eat the leftovers and is sort of almost nodding towards her to eat her leftovers. And Scout sighs as she's like putting the last bits of bread and like leftovers into her mouth hole as this 
as her like one hand has this taffy that's probably gotten sticky in her palm and she just keeps eyeing it. It's that like, awkward I'm like eating. nod and smile like, yeah, eat, eat the vegetables. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that at some point you see this little raccoon hand reaching for the taffy. And she like closes her fists on this <laughs> sticky taffy. <laughs> All right, so it looks like the only uh, a, su- a critical success is actually only if you roll both dice at their maximum. So like a d6 would get a six or the d8's an eight. Um, but I mean, you still got a success, obviously. And uh, while all this is going on, what are, what's Galeron doing? I think I think I was sleeping, wasn't I? Didn't I say I was gonna sleep during the first watch? So I just, yeah, as soon as Harvey- sleep- as soon as Harper walked away, I just sat down and pulled my hat down and went to sleep. Yeah, she's literally just put some food beside Goloran. Not in, like, rolling over proximity, <laughs> but, yeah. Okay. No, he just, he's on his, he's sitting on his butt, was back to a rock or something, and he's just hold, cradling his sword, and he's got his head down on the hill. I, I, I miss all the magic berry eating. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right then. Um, is there anything else the rest of you would like to do for the evening? Just dealing with the livestock. Doesn't Scout have first watch? I think so. I think it was Juniper and Scout first watch and Harper and Galeran second watch. Juniper doesn't necessarily need to be awake in the creepiest part of night. So Harper was okay being awake on her own as well, so. Like, yeah, I think, I want to say that it was Juniper and Scout together, and then Harper and then Galeron. Yeah. I'm like, I like how I'm the only adult that can't be left alone. <laughs> I, I just think you're the most patient <laughs> adult to handle Scout into, the, like, the middle of the night. Ah, it'll be fine. The master of the children. Yeah. Animals, children, you know, all in all. I mean, Scout's a good mix of both. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) If I get really sick of you, I'm just going to stick Rebecca on you and you can sort it out together. I need them quiet for a while. They're going to fight. I didn't say quiet. I just said occupy. Entertained. Yeah, so Harp will probably go and get her head down as well. Probably read her book for a little bit longer, but she'll probably fall asleep pretty quick after that. Are you reading the big tome or the other book that Galeran gave you? The one that Galeran gave her is a small one with a happy story rather than... <laughs> She's trying to distract herself a little bit. Okay. Ah, oh, fuck, where did I write that name down? Right? Isn't that always the way? <laughs> Because it's a personal journal, so it's got a name, and it's kind of important, and Mac just reminded me of it, so I want to make sure we say it. And there's, you know, Mac's shout-out for the episode. (laughs) Where did I put it? Nope, that's not. I need to organize my Google Drive <laughs> a little. You're all good. Um, Harper is sort of probably dozing off very slowly. It's one of those things where she's falling asleep whilst reading and mm. it slowly sort of falls falls onto her head. And you know, when they wake up in the morning and have that just like print book of line. the book. Yeah. yeah. Cause she sort of hugs it pretty close as well. Just like she's used to sleeping on her own and having to keep hold of all of her stuff. So, Scout's kind of like she's taken a few steps away from where the grown-ups are trying to sleep and she's got her stick and she's like make leaves <laughs> mm. leaves Pro- probably like smiles at that but rolls the other way so she doesn't leaves. see her leaves. Like, not laugh but like 
Chuckle. Moves it around the ground. She's just like spinning in circles with her stick. Looks back to make sure no one's gotten eaten by wolves. And she goes back and goes, leaves. Keep herself wide awake. She'll really tire herself out by the time this is over. Juniper's just sort of watching you do this and smiling and just going, You'll, she'll figure it out eventually. Okay. Let so I go. found it. I love all of this. You're all amazing. I could just listen to you do things in character all day. Um, so the journal, the it's obviously a reproduction and the cover's way nicer than a personal journal would have been. And it's it says on it, the journal of Majalian de Armas, dragon friend and lord of the golden dawn. And uh, I'm going to put it in Zoom for everyone so that if you want to know how I spell the guy's name. And uh, Harper, as you're reading the journal, there's a description of someone that matches Galeron. She sort of pauses for a moment, sits up. Goes back a few pages to read like the, the run up and then back again. And does a weird glare over to where like sleeping Galeron is and just... She bookmarks the page. She has like some pressed like herbs and flowers and bits of like paper that's um, and she sort of stuffs it in that side of the book and makes a note. Just like with a question mark on it. And she's like, I'll we'll ask him later. We'll ask him later. And looks at Kit and puts the book inside her coat. All right. Uh, I think when it's obvious that you're done reading, Kit curls up with you to go to sleep. Scout and Juniper are on the first watch. Leaves! Are you trying to make leaves, Scout? <laughs> Desperately, and it's not working. Uh, roll me... Just roll me a d20, Scout. Rocks fall. Leaves. So you're standing there. Leaves. 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 And you, I don't even know, you. how long do you stand there and try? She's like spinning in circles, like trying in different like corners of around her. And she probably does it for about a good like 30 minutes. Way longer than like a reasonable adult would to do something like this. They probably go like, do you make leaves? Oh no, this is weird. I'm gonna stop now. But she's a kid, so she's just like, fuck it! I can do this all night! Um. Okay. So, a half an hour goes by and nothing's happening. And you're about to give up and with one last point and shout a leaf does appear but instead of making a pile like the earlier in the evening this leaf slaps you in the face and she like as she kind of like picks it up she like looks at it she looks at the stick looks at it and in her excitement she like just shouts real loud juniper and she crushes the Shh. dead leaf in her hand people are sleeping i did it the stick made another leaf that is really cool of both you and the stick magic stick definitely you know yes good for you uh, magic but, stick yeah sleep sleeping adult voice Magic stick. Go you. Go go try some more. Don't okay. go, not near the fire. Uh, Mark, smoke. Yes, definitely just smoke. 
leaves. Oh, leaves. <laughs> All right. Well, Scout is playing with the magic stick. Juniper, can you give me either a perception or a sense check since you're supposed to be keeping watch with Scout? Sense or what was my other option? Perception. Uh, oh, God. Yes. Which is not good. I could add the fumble point to make it seven, but I have no idea what I'm aiming for. But a two on a d8 is usually not very salvageable. Uh, I mean, you can add a fumble point if you like, or um, the group's got a fumble point as well. Or does that's so far today, Harper's the only one with a fumble point, right? Oh, no, hang on. Yeah. Someone gave us advantages. Yep. Can I use an advantage? Sure. I just saw the overlay. <laughs> I will fix my macros before next time, I promise. I will never fix my macros. Oh, that is worse. We're sticking with the six. Huh. The, the dice in this game really don't like me. Everything's that's, fine, guys. That's me in most asleep. games. Um, well, I did fine in Cthulhu, where low is good. But yeah, no, um, uh, I see nothing. <laughs> Everything's fine. I think at some point I forgot what Galeron told me about facing away from the fire so you don't lose your night vision. And when Scout shouts, I turn around to look at her and I stare fully into the fire and I just go, crap. I just see nothing. Nothing. All right. But um, if my watch ends without a surprise attack, I'll, I'll go wake up Harper and just Harper. Galeron can sleep a little longer. Harper um, seems to be full of the kind of nervous energy that does well with like broken sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Paranoid watching. Yeah, exactly. Um well, you don't notice anything at this point, and before your watch ends, I think we're gonna go back to Galaron, who's sleeping. Galaron. Now that you've left town and have companions on an adventure with you again. What do you dream of? You're muted. Okay. Um, I think maybe he dreams of you know he's standing there and he sees the three the three ladies that he's traveling with and you know kind of like in his rags and he's got a sword and just a little bit of a scruff and his hat that looks all beaten and it's, it slowly fades to maybe him standing there a little bit more dressed up a little more noble looking and the three ladies turn to his two brothers and the three of them are back in the uh in the in the right in like the army uh very chivalrous very proud and uh you know on their way to do a mission the three of them were chosen to go and handle a certain deed maybe by a commanding officer and they're just all sitting by the fire this much, much like the same way we're, we're all sitting by it and it just turns to like a flashback of the three ladies turned into his two brothers and Galaran is a little bit younger a little more cleaner and a little less lube a little less stern looking, a little more righteous and noble looking. Would would Galaron be more relaxed at this point? Mm, seems like he has, uh, instead of relying on himself and his abilities, that him and his brothers, it's very, it's very 
evident and it's very well known throughout that they say by the dragons a lot or in the name of the dragons a lot almost like they have this higher purpose and full faith in the dragons because they know everything that dragons have done and created and done and given to the world they put an all stock in the faith of of the dragons and that's what guides them on their chivalrous and nobility that they're always the, the dragons are always watching per se um as the three of you are sitting around the fire, what is this mission you're going on? Maybe they're on a, a scouting mission and a more of a, a skirmish to take out some of the supply lines of the enemy of them right now. Uh, whatever whatever dark force is driving the enemy. They're, they're, they're sneaking around back to take out the supply lines uh, while the rest of the army moves to engage uh, in a battle. And, you know, them having to wipe out the supply lines would really give them and their soldiers and their side a significant advantage. And they know tomorrow's the day and they've just gathered around to talk about, like they always do. You know, we've done this before. We were chosen for a reason. The dragons will it. And we're going to be fine. Is, is this dream, this memory, is this the last time you saw your youngest brother? This is the last time he sees both of his brothers. This is the final night they were together, the three of them. I think because dreams are strange... I think even though you're in the memory, part of you is aware that it's the memory and you can see little differences in your brothers that maybe you didn't notice that night. And I think there's a feeling of what's coming that maybe none of you realized at the time because you have the, the benefit of being past this now. And I think we'll just leave Gaul around there with his siblings for now. Juniper and Scout, your watch passes without incident. Leaves. I'm just gonna give Scout like this little quiet high five. Like, yeah, we did it. Let's go wake up Harper. Do you want Ella or do you want Rebecca? Mm -hmm. It. And Scout gives kind of like a strange look to Rebecca. And she like, as she like pulls her ha the hat off of her head to expose her wild curly red hair. She's like, all right, we'll go Rebecca tonight. Because I know either way she's going to end up in my hair. I, probably true. All right. And we'll go shake Harper awake quietly. Harper. Like, oh, this far away from her, she's like, yes. Like this, <laughs> like, and as you breathe yeah. on her, like, yeah. yeah, no, 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 I'm, 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 I'm up, I'm up. Okay, like. I'll, I'll, okay. <sighs> next, I think the next lesson should be on personal space. Uh, what's, what's that? Yeah, exactly. That is the next lesson. For now, just go to sleep, Harper. Um, everything went fine. I saw nothing suspicious. Scout made another leaf with her magic stick. And, and she uh, sort of looks to Harper like, and, and to show me at some point. Scout just kind of lays <laughs> down, <laughs> clutches the stick like a baby, her magic stick. And uh, yeah, we're just going to go to sleep now. Okay. Uh, sleep well. And she sort of gets to her feet, brushes some of the dirt off of her sort of scoops kit up underneath her arm. He's probably still snoozing a little bit. And she goes and sits with her back to the fire, just looking out in the direction that anyone could be coming. And she pulls out that book again. She's not really reading it as intensely as she was before because she's keeping an eye out. Um, but every now and then she looks back to the description that reminds her 
a little bit too much of her friend. And he's looking at some of the artwork and things like that, but she's very much sort of sat there reading it, scritching Kit's head every now and then, quick glance around, and her ears are always aware. Do she think so? <laughs> Yeah, uh, you reread that passage in the journal a few times, and you're so focused on the description that reminds you of Galeron that it takes a couple of uh, readings before you realize that he's with this king, and there's a mention of that... Uh, two people didn't make it from the last mission with Galeron. But it's very vague. And it doesn't say who. And she's just reading it over and over, this person that resembles her friend, and probably putting some stuff not together, because she doesn't believe it's necessarily him right now. It's very much just putting things together, trying to work a Makes sense. Oh, this one's cheerier. Like, it's that sort of, like, really trying to nitpick it, like, trying to figure out things. She's always done that. She's always looked at, um, very deeply into things, but she'll probably see him asleep and think, not my business, and close the book for a moment. She knows she'll be looking at it again very quickly because she can't help it, but she does close the book and start to sort of and just look around the forest and her her mind probably wanders to thinking of her father but she quickly shakes it away she tries not to think about it and tries to remember the golden bridge again or the bronze bridge And just watches and waits. Uh, yeah, I think it's really easy to recall the bronze crossing bridge that you saw earlier. I suppose technically yesterday at this point. Mm. Um, and I mean, it's other than the, your point of view in this image is far away. It's as you remember, it's huge and there's um rail tracks crisscrossing everywhere um there's the clanking of metal not like people wearing armor but like machinery there's steam and smoke and it's a very busy city from what you know hmm. and i think she thinks about it for quite a bit because as much as she doesn't like cities she found it intriguing because of how many it wasn't like a village it's there's a lot more there so she can almost lose herself in it even though it's very very busy mm -hmm. um Have Harper gone to Bronze Crossing often, or is it more out of her typical way? Um, I think out of most of the city, she would have maybe stopped by there a few times. Not, like, super regularly, but if she's going past, she'll sort of maybe pop in for a few hours. It will never be for too long. She won't sleep there. Mm-hmm. Is it, uh, is it too noisy for her to sleep there because she's so used to being out she, of doors? She, she tried to stay in an inn once and because all the doors keep closing, all the people outside, she literally just l l was laying there like awake with her eyes like, oh my god, how do people sleep in these places? Like, it was just too loud. I, th I think as you're remembering that visit to the city is when you start to hear 
a small voice. What do I want? This one? Yeah. And you hear this small voice from a few feet away, maybe. It sounds like a child. And it just says very softly, can you help me? And I'm hearing this from the woods. Ah, uh, you're you're further away from the woods where you wouldn't be able to hear it from there, but it's sorry, if in the you're in field area up on the cliff bit. Oh. Yeah, because the way I imagine it is you're partially up the ridge because that's what Galeron wanted, mm. and so if like the fire is on the side and you've put yourself with your back to it, it would be down more into the field. I think she stops and listens again, sort of stands up. Not walks towards it, but takes a few steps forwards as if she's l trying to listen harder to see if she hears it again. Because at the moment she's very much like, okay, I hear voices and stuff in the woods often, which aren't actually voices, it's an animal or it's something like that. But... Yeah, I think you, uh, I think Harper steps the couple of steps forward and you're probably straining really hard to hear anything and just when you're about to s decide to settle back down i think you hear again a little a little closer but not by much this small can you help me and she, she looks back at the rest of the group sleeping and there's a real pull of someone needs help but she's supposed to be keeping watch and she looks down at Kit and is like, if I'm not back in four minutes, you start making a noise. You go and wake up Gulloran or something. You just sort of does like a, they have like a motion of I'm watching you kind of um, <laughs> thing. And yeah, and I I think as you're communicating with Kit, it's obvious the Kit's ears have turned. It's hearing this sound as well. It's like, but you stay here. And she sort of backs away. And she's gonna go and have a look because she can't help the idea that could, there could be someone on there right now here, especially a child. Uh, can you please make a perception check? Oh no! Uh, oh my! Hang on. Do I have a reroll? Because this is ridiculous. We sh you should all have at least two, Advanced. except for any yeah. who spent one already. Okay, I'll do another one then. Yes! Holy <laughs> go. I can even see in the dark. Night vision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've Harper's eyes just turn into flashlights. Like, I've got those Jurassic Park glasses on my head. Um, yeah, you you start to walk down the ridge and standing just a bit where uh, just a bit out. It's because the grass is so tall, it would be hard to see a child if they were small enough. Mm. And so, but you do see this small figure in where the grass starts to shallow out as it gets towards the ridge. Uh, and it's a small boy with shaggy dark hair and very frail looking. Can you and help me? He sort of, she's sort of reached and looking at how like scrawny he is. He sort of she pulls out some of that bread, sort of crouches down and holds it out to him. He's like, "What? Um, <clears throat> what, what do you need to help with? What, what, why are you out here? Where, where are your parents?" I, I, I don't know. They, I don't remember. A lot. Something happened. I think they're at my house. I think. Can I sense any magic around this child? Uh, give me a job knowledge check. Job knowledge. My job is to check how magical children are. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
I mean, she's seen things in the forest before, so she's never much sort of the person to rush towards something. So she is keeping her distance, but she is holding out this thread. Yeah, I think um, because so much has happened in the past two days, you you can't get a real sense of if there's any magic with the child, but you for sure something feels not 100%. Yeah, and she looks at... Why don't you come back to the camp with me? Where's that? Where have you come from? He gestures off into the grass in the direct roughly in the direction of the forest but f- from a different angle that you would have from where you all came from what's your name mm, no i can't use that <laughs> <laughs> timothy oh my gosh i was gonna say use timothy i love it Oh my gosh, Tiny Tim! Um, is like, hang on. Um, sort of looks at this kid is like, okay, well, why, why are you out here? I'm trying to find my parents. But why are you and your parents out here then? Because our, our home's that way, and I don't know where they are. And she's like looking up at the sun, like how late it is. So, it's very late for you to be up and about. How long have you been looking for them? I don't know. A long time. And can I just tell if anyone else is watching in surrounding areas? Like, is this a kid is talking to me while someone else is sneaking up on me kind of dealio? Yes, roll me either a perception or a sense. I'm going to use an advantage. <laughs> and <laughs> Galeron, being that you're a, you know, trained soldier and mercenary, if you'd like to make a perception in your half-asleep state to hear... Harper have a conversation. Okay. Yes! <laughs> um, do I have to announce I'm using the advantage first or I can wait till after or how's it done? Typically you have to announce it first, but sometimes I'm forgiving and we'll let you do it again anyway. I right, got well, a critical. I'll, I'll announce it now. I'll do it. I'll, I'll use an advantage, please. Okay. I think in, I think a crit 20 being sleeping would be kind of like cheesing the system. So we'll just leave it up to the dice. <laughs> It's just never awake. Ah, <laughs> oh, your senses are tingling. That's good for it. And two. All right. Hey, but a five is a little bit better. Mm. All right. Uh, Harper, <laughs> there is no one else around except your companions back up the ridge. As there's this boy is truly alone. And then she will hold out her hand to him I he'll uh he'll reach towards your hand and Galeron you do hear the tail end of this conversation um question how old does this boy look uh probably 10 or less younger than Harper or uh younger than Scout for sure I'm very much the same age Harper was when she was lost so she'll look him up and down and probably realize that she's like and seeing how frail he is sort of takes his hand but does sort of pick him up um starts heading back towards the camp when you pick the child up he's very cold Hmm. she probably then immediately takes off her coat wraps him up in it and it, it and he will trip over if it's if he walks it so she will pick him back up again she's just in sort of her 
the trousers and her layers upon layers of jumpers and clothes and everything like that. But she wraps him in it and pulls the collar up around, which probably comes up halfway up his head, and starts walking back to the camp then. Uh, so I'm uh, guessing Galeron uh, woke up having heard the conversation. So you'd see Harper returning with this bundle in her coat. I'm there, Harper. This, um, and sort of looks, Timothy has, is lost in the woods. And it's a bit late. She gives you sort of an eye of, I don't trust anything about this either, which you've probably seen her sort of look at before because she never tends to trust anything fully. But she's like, he's very cold, he's very hungry. Sit him down by the fire. And Galaran will start doing a perimeter walk around outside the line of sight of the fire. Yeah. And okay. Harper sort of moves him over, sort of gives a quick whistle for Kit to come over and sort of sit himself by Timothy. It's like, it's all right, it doesn't... It was, and she's about to say he doesn't bite, but then she didn't want to lie to the child, so it's very much like, he's fine. <laughs> and moves them both right next to the fire, and half sort of sits behind him so that he can't um, it sounds awful, like run but she's sort of looking back to see whereabouts in the perimeter Gullerant is as well as he moves around. Okay. Uh, are you doing... Uh, what specifically are you trying to do, Gallaran, with this perimeter walk? Uh, just stare out and about and look for anything anything out of the ordinary, any breezes, any movement, any shifting in the grass, um, any movement in the tree line, anything of the sort. Okay, make me a perception check, please. Now I'll use an auto 20. <laughs> okay. You don't notice anything at first, and it takes a moment before you realize that everything is still. And there was a breeze earlier, but now everything is very, very still. It's quiet, there is no wind. Even the light of the moon seems less bright. He will uh, back up into the camp and whisper to Harper, just be ready for anything. And he'll slowly go over to Scout and Juniper one by one, if he could. And I hope this is okay. Puts their, his hand over their mouths and then wakes them up. Shh. And so then, who who do you wake up first then? Juniper. Juniper, what do you do when you wake up with a hand on your mouth and being told to be quiet? Oh, I'm assuming it's one of my kids who's trying to quietly wake mommy. I'm assuming that once I go like this, I don't feel a child-sized arm or tiny body, but if I can't go. Be ready for a fight. And then he'll go over to Scout and do the same thing. Juniper will grab her little dagger and just think to herself, I've got nothing in a fight. <laughs> just to go grab the animals. What does Scout do when Galaran wakes her up? That, 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 Please. daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I made it very clear that she fell asleep holding her stick like a like this. So I feel like her immediate response upon being woken up with a hand over her mouth is to swing the stick <laughs> at Calorant's head. Okay. <laughs> like she can't make much of a noise. You're like, mm. I won't have you roll an attack, but. Galaran, can you? It's a bug. Can, can, if you'd like to try and not get hit by the stick, you can roll a dodge check. I'll just try to put my arm up and block it. Um, 
and I'm not getting hit with a stick. So I'm going to use another advantage here. Okay. <laughs> okay. One, two, boom. <laughs> You you manage to uh you start to move out of the way slightly and then you block it with your arm. You probably I'm assuming you probably grab it slightly. Yeah. Not me. Somebody else. They're ready for a fight. And 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 Scott's trying to sit up, but she's got a raccoon in her hair, so she's like. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm gonna go back outside the fire, like where the fire is. I'm gonna get out of the immediate fire line. Mm-hmm. Um, Harp has pulled out like basically her carving slash fruit knife slash knife that she uses for absolutely everything which is in her boot like she's not pulled it out fully but she is kind of resting one hand over the hilt just in case mm -hmm. I think uh, as all of this is going on and Harper you're doing that um you know, uh, your your attention's taken by Gall around waking the others for a moment, and as he steps back into the darkness around the perimeter, you look to your cloak and it's empty. She's holding her coat and like as it drops, and it's probably just Kit moving underneath it. There's like tip. Kid, like any sort of like <laughs> moving around, and she she gets up and she looks to Kit. She throws her coat quickly back on. And is like Kit, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Like it's just sort of looking at this fox while she's trying to look around at the same time. Um. And I think as Harper does that, Galaron, as you're looking out, you hear a soft voice. Can you help me? Probably hear Harper freaking out back at fire as well, if anything. Does it sound, I didn't hear the other kid talk. <clears throat> Juniper's just sort of trying to gesture towards either Harper or Galaran because no one's still sharing what's going on with them. And grabbing Rebecca out of Scout's hair, so at least Scout's ready to move around. Scout sits up immediately and just like starts looking around, like, what am I fighting? Gaul looks uh, back <laughs> Gaul looks back into the fire light and just kind of does a survey of who's still there and who's not. Yeah, Harper is moving towards Scout because in her head a child has just disappeared and is kind of helping Scout up like around the shoulders and is just like, okay, we do I don't know what's going on yet, but stay close. Who who who's fighting? Is there another wolf? No. Or Jackal? We, what were they? We, Dogs? We, there's there's someone and she sort of pauses. There's someone asking for help. Some where? Also, if someone's asking for help, why did Galeran tell them to be ready for a fight? Who's asking for help? There was a there was a child here, and now now the child's look. The forest does weird stuff. I let let's get towards Galeran. I mean. I'm great with kids. I, I know you are, but um, I don't know where oh. this one's gone right now. <sighs> I'm, I'm cool. Juniper, oh, you, you hear. Can you help me? Was the person asking for help for chance sounding a little bit like a child? Asking, can you help me? Because I'm hearing that, but I'm still not seeing anyone. That's what I'm saying. I can hear it, and I saw the child, and the child is gone. Can you hear it? Yeah, I just did, but I mean, you did you offer to help it? Or did Galaran draw his blade and go in first? No, no, I had the child by the fire. Uh, they, Timothy. I look, I look toward the fire. Do I see anything? This is creepy. Oh, don't be scared. It's just a kid. 
And hey, as kid. Scout, as you <laughs> <was> like, no. <laughs> like no. <laughs> as as you say those things, Scout, you feel a smaller hand in yours and a tug. <laughs> Can you help me? And I think we'll take our break there. Yes. <laughs> Awesome. Scout's hip kid's <laughs> much smaller than this with sticks before. She's not worried. No, you're not. Juniper is just, she really wants to take care of the kid, but you know, it kind of needs to be visible for that to happen. I will see everyone in a moment. Yeah, mm. you're on.
All right, so Scout, you feel a small hand in yours and a tug down towards the grass, and you hear, "Can you help me?" Do I see a kid when I look to my where my hand is? Yes, you see a small, shaggy-haired, very scrawny child. Help with what? I can't find my parents. Where did they go? I don't know. And they point off towards, back towards the forest. My house is that way. What town do you live in? We don't live in town. Can I hear this happening? I'm assuming the one isn't calling to me anymore. Yes, you probably hear. I mean, if it might be hard to hear the child because they're being quiet, but you, you, you there's no way Scout's not almost yelling her answers. Okay. And nothing, I just feel. Okay. And nothing's asking for help anymore, like the voice disappeared. I mean, yeah, you recognize, uh, if you listen to Scout and the other voice, you realize it's the same voice. Okay, I'll come back into the fire line now. Scout, ask the child how old he is. <sighs> how old are you? Eight. Ask him when he was born. Question. When were when's your birthday? In the winter. <laughs> sorry, 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 chat. Any chat just had me fucking dead. It's a very valid question. Did you get separated from them? Were you walking with them? Or did they walk without you and you followed? I don't know. <sighs> Looks to Galloran. Let's go take him home. There's no home there. Timothy, how long has it been since you've seen your parents? I, I don't know, a long time, maybe. Do you, know, oh. uh, do you know what year it is? What year are we in? Hell, as the GM, I don't know what year we're in. No. I just knew at eight years old, I knew my date of birth. I'm just taking for a long shot here. I don't know. Well, I just, yeah, like, that's valid. Yeah. I probably knew that too, but we have a very specific dating system and we, you know, teach our kids things based on that. Yeah. So. They live and die by the seasons in the Magic of Dragons. Scout kind of squeezes this kid's hand. It's Gollum, very cold. We have to take him home. Can we like put him near fire? 
and take him home in the morning. If he hasn't seen his parents in a very long time, I'm not sure four hours is going to be the biggest difference. Pop is like, I tried that! <laughs> like, she's in the background trying to figure out oh, what you just did happened. Pop, yeah. Pop. <laughs> I just harp her in the background, gesticulating yeah, just wildly. Like, why? Where is this child? <laughs> like... The child is most likely not with us. And every time he comes outside of a certain area where he might have been lost in the woods for a long time and didn't make it through, his spirit is still there. When Hoppa tried to bring him past. Whoa, that... whoa, whoa. Are you saying this kid is dead? Guys, that's not nice to say. Holy shit, Galaran. No way. Don't say guys. I didn't say that outright. I'm not trying to scare the poor thing. He's not cold because it's cold outside. It's cold because he's. Oh yeah, no, way more subtle to. Scout ignores him and looks to the kid and goes, "Lead me." And sticks her tongue out at Galaran for calling the kid dead. <laughs> Scout, if you leave with that child, you go alone. I'm not going. That's fine. I have a magic stick now. Very well. The scout, the boy, starts to pull on your arm and lead you into the grass. And when she's walking, she'll say, you know, I lost my mom and dad in the forest, too. And no one really went to look for them. I'm sure Galleron's being completely sensible, but Juniper's going with scout. Have I seen any of this? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. We're walking in your direction yeah, probably now. Totally. You, you like, especially because you were close enough to the fire still that uh, you would have seen Timothy with Scout before they walked off. Mm, yeah, I think. But you, you know, he wasn't there before. Like, he was not there a moment ago. I think Hopper runs off to Scout. Is it that Tim? Where, where are you going? He's leading me. Well, where? To look for his mom and his dad. Home. We're taking him home. I mean, the fire didn't work. I'm trying home. He does. And she sort of pauses and, and crouches down in front of Timothy again. It's like, where is home? He points. It was so easy for you to be lost already. Let's maybe not all get lost in the tonight. Scout gives uh, Harper a weird look. I think if we lead him, he might not get lost again. Galeron told me. She does like eyebrows. <laughs> and Harper probably stands up. He's like, okay. If I say run, you run. Mm -hmm. And she probably holds out her hand for Timothy's other hand. You feel it, the small cold hand in yours. I take it the direction we're going is pretty dark, so I'll cast a few lights again, so at least we can sort of see where we're going. Okay. Before that they start moving, with Timothy, how far do you away do you think you are from home? Is it a long way away? Or is it just a short distance? Uh, his face scrunches up as he thinks real hard in that, you know, that way sometimes small children do. And it's, it's not very far, it's by the forest. And Harper does look back at Galoran like, help, <laughs> like, I don't know what to do. Why have I been given two children in the last like day? Timothy, you go first. You're in charge of this adventure. I'll be right back. And she sort of looks to go around and she looks down at Kit as well. And sort of does sort of not send a message to Kit, 
but there's an understanding there for a moment. And it's more just telling it remember where this camp is. Yeah, Loran, you... I'm leaving Ryu here. Can you mind him? Sure. He's like, all these girls going out to die. At least I'm getting a free donkey out of this. <laughs> Harper has in her head that if they get too far, the child is going to disappear. But he needs <clears throat> the others to see it, to understand it. Timothy, what's your mom's name? Me, mom. <laughs> da, da, da. Uh, he's, go he's gonna say Harper. <laughs> I mean, it'll be a shock to Harper. <laughs> Dad always called her Evie. That's a pretty name. That's a really pretty name. What did your ma call your dad? Stubborn. <laughs> my mom called my dad that too. And the whole time he's pulling on both your hands if you're still holding on to him. Mm -hmm. And Scout's gonna just keep asking like little questions. Like, do you have any pets? I had a dog, but the winter was too hard. Mm -hmm. I wasn't allowed to have any pets. One time I tried to steal a goat, though, and I got in a lot of trouble. Goats are funny. They are very funny, and they eat everything. Everything! Even the gross food that no one likes. <laughs> um, Harper, when you told Kit to remember where the camp was, you you got like almost like an image of a pirate map with the big red X on the, for confirmation. And you, the three of you walk through the grass with Timothy in tow, uh, Scout just asking little questions and keeping Timothy occupied and and Galeron, do you eventually follow? Galra's not coming! It's fine, we don't need him. You're yeah. muted. <laughs> You're muted. I step outside the firelight, right where I heard the boy's voice, waiting for the boy to appear again and ask me if I can help him. <laughs> I almost sit down like I waited for it to happen. <laughs> Paying no attention to the donkey or any other animals in the <laughs> I only left you to donkey to rest with me. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm sure Ryu's uh, yeah, he's just hitched anyway. I mean, I'm just, I peek over. I'm not gonna let like jackals eat him or anything. But I'm, not, like, I'm not like I'm not sitting there petting him for talking. La, 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 I don't think la, Ryu la, even. <laughs> I don't think Ryu even woke up. <laughs> Probably not. Um, I'm trying to look around a little while we're, while we're walking with Timothy because I'm I'm probably happy Scout's entertaining him, but I'm like, okay, sure, if it's not that far, maybe there's like a small house nearby or a hut. Or Burned some out lights house. that aren't mine. You know, something. Yeah, that, make a like perception has, check. Like, like, like no one's lived in it for 200 years. Make a perception check. Thanks. Uh, hang on. Yes. Ooh. You see off, not too far away, but definitely just within the tree line, you see like the silhouette of what could be a house. Timothy, is it, is it that? And uh, I think he just gives you a, mm-hmm. Great, you know, know where we're going. Just keep going. I'm gonna 
make sure Harper's also paying attention. I'm not so much in, like, Scout's dealing with Timothy, that's fine. I need the other adult to also be adulting. Yeah, Harper's looking at, Harper's more looking at the surroundings rather than the house. Does the house look? What's the word? Habitable? Recently, have it recently lived in? There's no way to tell from where you are. Yeah, crap. Okay. Slowly keep going. All right. Timothy leads you a short distance into the forest, and you come across the house, and as you step around it, you realize that it's a single wall with what's left of a chimney. Um, there are broken timbers and burn marks, and you see the remains of three bodies, two adults and a child. I think Harper was expecting something to this effect having been in the woods for so long, just knows that things happen. But she stands there, she still holds Timothy's hand, if he is technically there. And more sort of looks down at Scout. You okay? And Scout isn't listening to her, but she's looking at Timothy. I don't think Timothy. I think Timothy's just standing there. Scout is going to drop her stick on the ground. And because she's not super tall, but she's definitely taller than this kid, she's going to fall to her knees and she's just going to kind of hug him from under the arms. I'll put just let so. I think, uh, Harper, uh, Scout, as you hug Timothy, you hear, thank you. I couldn't find it. And mm -hmm. as you're, go ahead. I was saying, she'll just say like, now you can find your mom and dad. Evie and stubborn, right? I think you just get a very quiet, uh, chuckle for a second and as you're hugging him eventually there's nothing there and and Scout will kind of just stay there in that position before she like looks up to Harper and Juniper and tears are just kind of pouring down her face she doesn't say anything, but she looks up on her knees with her little magic walking stick by her side, and she just looks to them with tears pouring down her face. I think Harper almost mi mimics what Scout did to Timothy and does just sort of get a little bit, um, sort of kneels down and then pulls her in for a hug. And Harper doesn't hug. And she sort of half wraps her coat around Scout as well doesn't say anything at all, doesn't know what to say, and probably stays there for quite a bit, and at the end of it there's that awkward, you know, the pat on the back, like hug done, like doesn't know mm -hmm. what to do, like the, okay. And, and, and when she's done, like, Harper's entire layer underneath her coat mm -hmm. is just wet, and... and... <laughs> Yeah, she takes out like this um, she sort of, as you go to use your jumper, she sort of pulls it down, takes out what you're pretty sure is a square cut out of a tablecloth, which is supposed to be a <laughs> handkerchief, and is like cleaning your face and is it, keep hold of this <laughs> and then stands up holds out a hand to scout should we get warm by the fire again? 
Mm-hmm. And she'll like kind of scoop up her stick and kind of clutch it close to her. She takes Harper's hand and she doesn't say anything as she heads back. Harper doesn't feel like Scout is ready to hear anything yet, so sort of holds her hand quite tightly with her big like mittens on and sort of half welcomes her into her coat and starts to lead Scout away, glancing back at Juniper. What's like Juniper doing? Going. Juniper at first hasn't moved. She's gone completely white, completely wide-eyed, like white-knuckled, is not crying. And um, while Harper and Scout are hugging, she'll have headed over to where the bodies are and she'll have started covering them with the intention to like put them next to each other make him look more at rest. She's letting Harper and Scott have whatever it is. She's she's just trying to put Timothy and Evie and Stubborn at ease. Making sure they're like make sure Timothy's in between them um, and they're all together. As you as you do these things to make them uh, to arrange them you notice in uh, one of the adults hands grasped tightly is a piece of cloth that somehow survived everything I'll I'll have a look at it Um, not fully consciously um What's the? It's a, it's a masquerade mask, and it's very, it's very uh, ornate. Mm-hmm. Um, it's white with gold around the edge, and it's got it's it's the it's almost like the domino mask, except mm-hmm. it's got a bit of the nose to it, and. Uh, it's it's with the rough estimate of the amount of time that's passed with everything else in the house there's this shouldn't be intact like this i'll i'll sort of hand it off to rebecca while i'm arranging them because i'm i'm like making sure their their hands are on their their stomach so that they're actually just resting and i'm just one, I'm gonna try and use if you know, it was a little weird last time. Used some of my magic to like have flowers grow around them. Yeah, I. That totally. Is the. The grass grows a little, and flowers grow up, and it kind of covers them almost like a blanket. Yeah. Juniper just stands there looking at them for. Probably really long. I know Harper and Scott are probably ready to leave. Juniper isn't. Does Harper take Scout back if Juniper is not ready? I think it's more that um, Harper turns Scout away and is ready to leave, but she acknowledges that Juniper obviously needs just a bit more time. Looks to her and just gives her a bit of a nod. But we'll turn away again because assuming Juniper doesn't want to be exactly watched like that. I think if nobody pulls Juniper out of it, she's going to be there till dawn. And Harper will probably call back to her like, we need to get back. Yep. Yeah. Life goes on for the living. We make your way but... back then. Yeah, it is. I think Harper was going to say something, but just thinks it's not the time because she has a very different outlook on everything. But she'll sort of start walking back with Scout, but won't until Juniper starts moving. 
beautiful trail behind you. Does Scout do anything else while they walk back? Um, I don't think so. I think that was a big first for Scout. You make your way back to the fire. And Galaron, you see them approach slowly. Is making gestures to be like, oh, like, looks sad. You're muted. But like, looks sad, but is very much like. Yeah, Galaron, I called what was, you know, Galaron knows what was at the end of that. So he just walks mm. back up to the fire and sits down and goes back to sleep. Doesn't say anything. Harper guide Scout down to the fire just to get warm. And she'll kind of sit squat and put her like stick on her lap and kind of just look at the fire. Juniper staying away from the fire. She's going to stretch her out with her support raccoon. And I think Harper looks at Scout stays very quiet for a long time, sits next to Scout. That was a very nice thing you did. It was the right thing. Didn't want him to be looking forever. Scout, you may come across more things like this out in this forest. It's one of the not so fun things of adventuring but it's there it's hard to avoid everything you know juniper she's obviously listening in you can just hear her say you don't need to go adventuring for this time well, whatever happens in this forest no matter how sad it is, we still have to help people because it's the right thing to do. Exactly. And it's never easy. She sort of puts her coat over the top of Scout, which probably drowns Scout. Because hmm. it is a very oversized coat, even on Harper. There is He's back with his family mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it's the end There are many things we Don't understand about The forest, the beyond, the magic Or whatever it is But there's more and she turns back and looks at the fire herself, sort of just leaving everything else and staying quiet. Um, at least it won't be cold anymore. Exactly. <sighs> Maybe you should get some sleep, if you can. Still, my watch anyway. And she'll kind of just fall out of mm. the blanket or out of the coat onto like her side by the fire there, just kind of mm. slump. And Harp will probably stand up, click at Kit, and start going towards the perimeter again. Probably actually what um, Galaran taught her and starts to move around, just have some time and watches before she has to wake up Galaran. Juniper do anything else? You mean other than not sleeping? <laughs> yeah, she's got an old journal out and she's um, she's reading older entries. Is there a specific entry she's reading? 
Um, yeah, it's from, uh, it's actually from a few years ago. Um, it was around the time there was a fair in town and um, her kids and some of the workers' kids skipped all of their chores to go annoy the people putting up the tents and stuff. And like in her journal, she's reading back to how angry she was at them. Because was like, she, she's not a strict mom, but there's always the rule, chores first, then go do whatever. And just the fact that this, that one rule they had to ignore and she's just, she's reading back and she's just sad. She spent time angry. It, it feels like such a waste. Does she manage to catch any sleep the rest of the night? Yeah, I think she's tired enough that she she falls asleep eventually, but I think she probably falls asleep holding the journal. Just sitting next to her Ayu. She doesn't go back to the fire. Harper, the rest of your watch is uneventful. Probably just do everything she's supposed to and then head over um, to Gulloran. It's just sort of like squats down and sort of like, not pokes, but is like tapping him awkwardly until he wakes up. It's your turn. And then starts like drumming her finger. Still can't hear you. Damn. I'm awake. As <laughs> <laughs> he's at, I'm awake. It's like, okay, oh, come on. <laughs> Get some rest, Hoppa. I'll try. And she kind of takes its space. I didn't of... go to Papa because I didn't even see what was at the end of that. I know. But I think they have to see it. Indeed. <clears throat> and um I'll begin my I'll begin my watch and my walk around. Kind of give Harper a smile before she goes to sleep. She gives him a sort of half a wave before she tries. She closes her eyes. She's not asleep. You can definitely tell she's not asleep for like the first 20 minutes because she's trying to, but she seems calmer. Are any of them shivering while they sleep now? Uh, are any of you shivering while you sleep? I imagine Juniper is not that warm being away from the fire. I missed so many layers. Sorry. I don't think Juniper even, like, she fell asleep reading. I don't think she bothered grabbing her blanket or bedroll or just to sort of um, in her clothes. Galaron will go to the, the donkey and grab Juniper's blanket and put it over her gently and then disappear outside the firelight for his parameters and his walks, always looking back in at the three of them. And he'll just. Tell himself when he gets to the bronze bridge. Investigate Harper's father for her and then leave these people to fix the world. Not my job. Not my adventure. We'll just keep moving around. You might hear Scout like whimper in her sleep. Sad. Does Scout whimper any names or anything specific or is it just small cries? It's just a quiet, it's, it's a very heartbreaking little noise that comes from her.
Do you do anything all around when you hear that? Yeah, he'll, he'll walk up, get get kind of close, just take a deep breath, and not your concern. And he'll turn back around and continue his parameters. I mean, if it's an audible whimper, there's a pretty good chance Rebecca's going to come waddling over. Because she soothes Juniper's kids when they have nightmares, so Juniper doesn't always have to get up. Mm -hmm. She's going to waddle over and just sort of worm her way into Scout's arms if she can. Oh yeah, definitely. With Ella judging from a distance. Yeah. Galeran, as you stand your watch and walk around the perimeter, at the edge of your vision, you catch a pair of eyes in the sky, not really far away, but not close. And it's hard to see because it almost looks like the sky with the stars, but you see a sinuous body and a pair of antlers and you just hear, I like you all, you did a good thing. I might follow you. And that's where we're gonna end today's episode Woo! of Breath the of Magic. The dragon approved, y'all. The dragon's approved. Yes, now we have the dragon stamp of approval. Yeah, but is it a good one? <laughs> like, he has oh, antlers, course. of course he does. Exactly, he's gonna be awesome. It's a good place to leave off. I have two weeks to figure out what I'm going to say. <laughs> Based off my history. <laughs> now this is gonna be... I was like, what What can we... What if I, I was like looking at my notes like, what have I been meaning to do that I want to do right? Oh, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, just throw a dragon at them after I make everybody cry. <laughs> what a better pick-me-up. And now you have two weeks to wait. Uh, I love this. Awesome. Um, thank you so much. Um, yes, we are taking a break uh, next week because, hey, it's Christmas. That, that, that's what happens. Um, Scrat and I will be streaming Christmas Day, though. So, um, And if we can figure out how, I will be streaming for the Christmas dinner, which will be interesting. Um, otherwise, please check out the links coming up in chat now. That includes um, our Discord. Um, and also uh, YouTube. YouTube, if you want to catch up on everything that's already happened so far, you can find the playlist over there. <laughs> um, bless you. A huge, huge thank you to um, our wonderful sponsors <laughs> in the form of Hero Forge. You will have seen uh, some of the miniatures um, at the beginning um, and also during the break. Also, uh, Major Press Dark Matter is now out. It's shiny, it's beautiful, it's fun, and it's one of my favorite um, systems um, you can possibly have. Um, and also, last but certainly not least, the deck of many with their moving magic cards um, and also Humblewood, um, a very wholesome book which looks wonderful as well. Otherwise, keep evoking emotions and we'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs>